Now, I, I want to add one more to the list because I see it frequently enough, and uh, we'll talk about why in just a minute. And that's, I'm going to add it up here, coenzyme Q10, CoQ10. Now, the reason why we put CoQ10 in here is we know that CoQ10 deficiency can cause nerve damage. We are absolutely certain of that. There are polyneuropathies associated with a number of research studies. I've seen it clinically a number of times. But it's, it's, the reason I mention it tonight and, and want to bring it up is that although this is not a super common deficiency, unless you're taking medicines. Now, I'm going to pop up another image for you on some of the medicines that can cause neuropathy. And, and most of these medicines cause neuropathy directly as a result of either inhibiting something, of, of inhibiting something on this list or of being neurotoxic themselves. So, so the medicine either damages the nerves directly or the, or the medicine causes nutritional deficiency in one of these items. And CoQ10 is a big one. And why I put it up here, because how many of you are taking a statin to lower your cholesterol? How many of you are taking diabetes medications like metformin? These two classes, statins, number one medication prescribed, they cause CoQ10 deficiency, and CoQ10 deficiency can cause a neuropathy. And then you got diabetic medication, particularly metformin causes CoQ10 deficiency. Interestingly enough, metformin also causes B12 and folate deficiency. And, and so, you know, here's the thing. A lot of people with diabetes complain of neuropathy. Numbness, tingling in the feet is generally where it starts. And people with, with diabetic, they call it diabetic neuropathy, right? So you've heard that term before. So diabetic neuropathy is it from the diabetes or is it from the medication, particularly metformin? So the, you know, the question is, does metformin cause the diabetic neuropathy or does the sugar cause the diabetic neuropathy? Because metformin it causes folate and B12 and CoQ10 deficiency, which all three deficiencies can cause a neuropathy, but so does high blood sugar. High blood sugar over time damages nerves, which can also lead to neuropathy. So if you, this is, so pay attention, if you've got diabetic neuropathy and you didn't have it until after you started metformin for a number of, of months or years, then you may suspect that it's the metformin actually contributing to the nutritional loss that's leading to the neuropathy. But the other thing is if you're trying to lower your cholesterol, which I think is, is moronic to say, the, to say the best thing about it is moronic. Um, and you, if you're interested in learning more about, about lowering cholesterol and why it's a big fat myth and why you shouldn't really be focused on that, you can go and watch my series on on cholesterol i did a crash course on cholesterol and uh and you're more than welcome to watch that series but but statins cause coq10 deficiency and again how many diabetics are also on statins because these two medications are con are concomitantly prescribed very frequently you know you go to the cardiologist and your blood sugar is high but you're also your cholesterol is high so they give you both a statin and a diabetic medication so you've got two meds now blocking coq10 and oftentimes there's a there's a trifecta to this and that is the blood pressure meds, so BP meds, also can cause CoQ10 deficiency. So now, you know, again, your risk of heart disease, it's ironic, right? Your risk of heart disease, and so the doctors are trying to mitigate your risk. They're trying to give you drugs, rather, to mitigate your risk. So the blood pressure medication lowers your blood pressure, reduce your risk. But in the process of lowering your blood pressure, it lowers your CoQ10. Same thing with the statins. Lower your cholesterol in the name of reducing your risk, but in that very same name, they're also lowering your CoQ10, which again, causes neuropathy. And then the diabetic medication, same scenario there. Now, combine all that together. These are, these are all like drugs that are given to reduce the risk for heart disease or the development of a stroke or a, um, a heart event or a myocardial infarction, heart attack, right? So they don't just inhibit CoQ10. Um, these medications, you know, when you, when you combine them in such a way, they also inhibit other nutrients. Now, I, th I think it's also important that you understand that CoQ10 deficiency doesn't just cause neuropathy. So it can cause a neuropathy, but CoQ10 deficiency can also cause congestive heart failure. So congestive heart failure. Now, pay, pay attention. Congestive heart failure oftentimes starts out as high blood pressure. This is one of the first and earliest warning symptoms that you might have congestive heart failure. Now, I just said 
that doctors give these three medications to reduce the risk of developing heart disease, right? But I also just said that by giving those three medications, we induce CoQ10 deficiency that can cause high blood pressure and congestive heart failure. So you get to make the call. You get to make the judgment call. You probably know somebody that you love. There's probably somebody in your family, somebody, maybe a friend, that is probably taking all three of these medications. And they probably have a neuropathy too. And nobody's ever even had a conversation with them about CoQ10. It's one of the, it's one of the most common causes of neuropathy, not because CoQ10 is so deficient in most people's diets, but it's because CoQ10 deficiency triggers neuropathy and these drugs trigger CoQ10 deficiency. So you get to make the call. If you're on these medications, you, you know, I, I encourage you not to just quit your medicines without talking to your doctor. Go to your doctor and have a, you know, an intelligent conversation. And if your doctor is not willing to do that, then find a doctor who is willing to do that so that you can, you know, again, appro appropriately um, take care of yourself, right? Because if, if you don't do it, who will, right? You have to be your own advocate. So there's some other medications. We talked about, you know, these three causing just specifically CoQ10 deficiency. I also said though that metformin causes B12 and folate deficiency. Blood pressure medications cause CoQ10 deficiency, but blood pressure medications can also cause electrolyte de deficiency and electrolyte disturbances. So potassium, calcium, magnesium deficiency are very common with electrolyte use. Vitamin B1 deficiency, I said electrolyte use, but I meant, I meant diuretic use. Vitamin B1 deficiency can also be caused by blood pressure medications. And we didn't write magnesium or calcium on the board, but we could very easily do that because magnesium and calcium deficiency also cause neuropathy. Um, and, you know, one of the interesting things about that, since I'm talking about it, is lead blocks magnesium and calcium. So lead is lead toxicity causing neuropathy a result of magnesium and calcium depletion or, or blockage? I, I, you know, some speculate that, that it is. So again, these can also contribute to, to neuropathy as well. I know I'm kind of sidetracking here, but I thought it was important to add that in since we were talking about it, uh, about the diuretics. Now, also, if you're taking blood pressure, or not blood pressure, but if you're taking antacids, so Nexium, Prilosec, Tagamet, uh, Zantac, anything that's designed to block stomach acid, know that you're actually probably causing vitamin B12 deficiency over time. And again, we talked and spent a lot of time on vitamin B12 deficiency. Also know that when you're taking antacids, you cause calcium and magnesium deficiency. You also cause copper deficiency. You can also cause vitamin B6 deficiency with antacids. So it's not something that you, you know, it's not something that you want to play with. If you've got enough gastrointestinal problems that you're having reflux, the better question is why? Not what can I do to block it, but why am I having the problem? And really getting with a doctor who can help you understand and isolate the root cause reason as to why that problem exists as opposed to medicating it. Because again, if you medicate it long enough, the outcome doesn't look pretty. And then another one is anti-seizure medications. And I know that sounds ironic, but um, the anti-seizure medications really block vitamin B1, block vitamin B12. Um, I know a lot of people take seizure medications because a seizure is a type of neuropathy, right? A seizure is a type of neuropathy, but the very medication that's being used uh, can oftentimes lead to chronic nutritional neuropathies that can mimic seizure. So, you, you know, you end up chasing your tail, just like you end up chasing your tail here when you're on these medications for heart disease and you're causing CoQ10 deficiency and you end up with more heart disease as a result of, you know, as a result of not knowing what you're doing. Same kind of thing with the seizure medications. Now, this is not me telling you to quit your seizure medications and go get in a car and start driving. This is me telling you, go have an intelligent conversation with your doctor and get these things evaluated and get these things looked at because sometimes a person needs a medication, but if you aren't aware of the nutritional side effects of what some of these medications can do, you can actually recreate your disease in a new way. And that's not intelligent or smart either. So it's very important that you, you know, that you understand that. Um, and the last category of medicines that Really, I didn't write them on the board here, did I? But the last category of medicine that can create um, a neurological problem is your antibiotics. Antibiotics um, knock out your gut flora, and much of your gut flora is responsible for producing a lot of your B vitamins. So remember, a lot of your B vitamins are made in your own intestinal tract as a result of healthy gut flora, which is one of the reasons why antibiotics given, and I'm not talking about one round of antibiotics to save your life because you had 104 fever and you weren't kicking an infection. I'm talking about 
you know, every week you go to the doctor because your ear hurts a little bit and they're pumping you full of antibiotics several times a month. Like that chronic antibiotic use is what I'm referring to. Now, there are cases where acute antibiotic use can create damage to, to, to your body. So one of those examples is like ciprofloxacin, which is a very potent type of antibiotic that's known to cause tendinopathies. So particularly it can rupture the Achilles tendon or it can damage the Achilles tendon, making it very difficult for people to walk. That can happen acutely. These long-term antibiotic uh, antibiotics causing B vitamin deficiency, that's more of a chronic thing. That's more of a repetitive use over time. So the other thing that we know on medication lists that can cause neuropathy is your chemotherapeutic agent. So if you're undergoing cancer treatment, one of the side effects of chemotherapy is neuropathy. And so these two, I'm going to put a little, well, I'm going to highlight these two here. Let's use a different color. So if you're getting chemo and you're developing a lot of neurological symptoms, know that these two B vitamins might be why, because chemos affect your, v, your B12 and your folate. So you might benefit from higher doses of B12 and higher doses of folate. What do I mean by high doses? 10,000 micrograms a day, that's MCG. Okay, and on the folate side, it, upwards of two grams a day. Um, and so that for many people with, with chemo induced neuropathy is very, very helpful to kind of help them mitigate those symptoms. So if that's what you're struggling with, it's important too, that if you're doing that, um, I, I recommend doing it under supervision, but if you're doing it, you want methylated versions. So the methyl form. So for vitamin B12, that would be methylcobalamin for folate. That would be methyl folate or five methyl tetrahydrofolate at five MTHF. Um, would be a supplemental version of methylated folate. That's going to give your body the easiest B vitamins in those forms to use to help combat what's going on with that chemo. So again, those are kind of your, your medicines that, are, uh, that have the potential to induce neuropathy. Hey, and if you missed the earlier part of this series, click right here so you can go back and get caught up. The information there might be critical to helping you on your path to better health. And as always, thanks for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe for updates below. Have a great day.